What's going on everybody? Long time no see. For those of you guys that don't keep up on Facebook or Instagram or any of the other forms of social media or have not seen, I've been out of the game for a little while. I got myself some new hardware here. It's just temporary, ain't gonna be around forever. And we haven't been doing much of anything with cars or content or, well, I won't say cars, but content and all that kind of stuff because your boy's been in the hospital. I'll give you the full explanation on all that in a little bit, but for now, I just want to talk a little bit about what's been going on and what we've got coming up. And of course, I bought a new car. Well, I didn't buy it, I traded for it, but still, I got a new car. Right now, we've got the Nova and it has been running the best it ever has in a long time. We've got the 6.0, the PRC heads, the Trick Turbo Air to Water, the Snake Eater 220s or 2200s, the Pro Series. Everything's been working very well, flawlessly. The custom cam from Texas Speed. We've been putting down some solid passes with way less boost than we've ever had to before. The problem is it's not good enough. Like the car doesn't really fit uh, into any classes other than small tire. We don't have it tagged. It's a whole thing in Delaware. It's not that easy. I can't just go and pay some money and they hand me a license plate. It doesn't work that way here. So I'm not really sure where the car fits in. But with what's been going on with my health, we're really not planning on doing anything too crazy. We want to maintenance it a little bit. We've been having a problem with some fuel pressure. Last time we had problems with fuel pressure, it was related purely to fuel filters. But when we put this motor in, which was only about a month ago, well, actually a little more now, it got brand new filters and everything, brand new housings, brand new filters. So I don't think that that's the issue, but we are gonna check just to make sure. Your boy has been pretty sick. Well, sick-ish, kinda, whatever. Why do I have a midline in my arm? Well, for those of you guys that don't know, I've had a multitude of issues with my stomach, Crohn's disease, you know, I've got uh, some of those kind of issues going on and I was supposed to be having a surgery later on, um, but unfortunately what happened is that the area that I was supposed to have surgery on got pretty bad and it ended up putting me in the hospital. Long story short, I spent two weeks in the hospital and ended up also with an infection in my bone. So they've had to cut my tailbone, I've had surgery, um, obviously still a long recovery process from that and that's where the midline comes in. I have to give myself IV antibiotics every day. And that's gonna go on for maybe another week, possibly more depending on what they decide. So I've been down for the count for a little while. It's been pretty rough. I've been sitting here at home doing mostly absolutely nothing, just trying to recover. Today I finally felt like, man, tired of this i need to get outside i need to do something so uncle tom came over because i'm not really supposed to be wrenching something about moving my arm too much and with the midline i don't know better safe than sorry i'm not really supposed to be doing a lot but we're getting really really close on a bunch of these projects that you guys haven't seen so let's take a look at them and kind of figure out what's going on there All right, so right now we have got a leaking brake line. So we picked up the Regal from the transmission shop because I had hurt the transmission almost immediately after installing it, almost immediately after refresh, which come to find out the issue itself was the actual shift lever on the side of the train. So Uncle Tom right now is working on getting this brake line out so we can go ahead and swap the brake line to the rear that was leaking, get it bled out, and then this thing should be just about ready to try and take down through inspection. I know we're gonna have to add a horn, but all the blinkers work, wipers work. Once we fix this brake line up, the brake should work. That'll be good to go, and then this thing will finally be ready to cruise. Also, we ended up with a little care package from the folks over at FST Carburetors. If you guys remember when we first put together the Regal, the motor ended up eating itself kind of, well it hydro locked and it hydro locked because we had a bad carb on it. So we've got a carb on there now that is way oversized, way too rich. It works, don't get me wrong, it's making the car run and drive and we were able to do some smoky, smoky burnouts after we picked it up from the transmission shop. But the folks at FST said, hey, we see you struggling, we know you're not a carburetor guy, here's a carb, throw it on, don't touch it, 
run, it should work exactly how you need. So we're gonna go ahead and throw the FST carb on and we're gonna give that a shot, see how that ends up working out for us and see if it makes an improvement. Speaking of long forgotten projects, the Dodger's here. We're not doing nothing with it. It's just sitting here looking pretty. One day we'll put a full tube chassis under this thing and it'll be awesome, but today's not that day. I don't got time for it. The El Camino is this close. Now, you guys don't know, we've been doing a bunch of work to get this thing roadworthy and ready. Uncle Tom fixed the brakes. We've swapped out brake lines. We've swapped out brake parts. Um, we got a different water pump on there. We still need another different water pump, another new one, I think, because this one is, uh, I think the bearing and the water pump is shot. But we did take it through inspection and it passed everything except for the rear brakes. The rear brake percentage was off a little bit on one side. So we're going to go ahead, adjust that. Actually, we're going to bleed out the rear brakes again just to make sure that's not what it is. And then also do a little bit of adjustment on the drum brake in the rear to kind of make that it was the right rear that needed a little more. So if we got to, we'll adjust that out a little bit, get that right. And it sucks because I got these awesome wheels, right? Check these things out. So I got these awesome wheels because she needed new tires and it was cheaper to get a set of used wheels and tires than it was just the tires. The problem is, I'll show you guys the rear tires. The problem with these rear tires and wheels, in order for them to fit, we're going to have to notch the frame. Now, notching the frame on the rear of a G-Body, pretty simple, a lot of people do it, no big deal. But Mallory was kind of like, eh, I don't know that I want to notch the frame and everything else. And so, I don't know, we haven't convinced her yet that notching the frame and making these matching rears go on there would be the best idea. Worst case, if she doesn't want to have the frame notched on that thing, we'll just go ahead and notch the frame on the Regal and we'll put these on the Regal and we'll put my weld drag lights on the El Camino and all will be right with the world. And then that brings us to my baby, Old Fool's Gold, the Nova. You guys know what the deal is. I'm not exactly sure when we're gonna be racing this thing again. Part of it is I really shouldn't be racing right now. Uh, what I'm supposed to be doing, per doctors, is taking it easy and not going on 8, 10, 12 hour drives to go to racetracks and stressing myself out and doing all that kind of stuff uh, until I get a little bit better. Alright, so it's a couple days later and, you know, there's been some stuff going on. I did manage to get the midline removed from my arm. But there's been a lot of doctor's appointments. There's still a lot going on and there's still a lot for me to process and get figured out. So I'll kind of bring you guys over here because I did tell you that I would show you the other car that I got. And then actually between the time I filmed that video and finished this video, I actually got another one too. We'll explain that one when it shows up. This one here, I have absolutely no plans with. Uh, this purely was done because a guy reached out, wanted to trade the RV. I said a Fox body is probably easier to get rid of than an RV. I have no interest in it. You guys know I'm not really super huge Fox body fans. It might possibly come in handy for some future stuff. I'm not sure. We might just sell it off and let it go on down the road. So let me show you guys what we're working with here. It is a hatch. So that's a downfall, I guess, but it is a oh, beautiful full interior car. The interior is very nice, no rips in the seats, all that kind of stuff. It does have a tubular K member. There's some LS motor mounts in the back there. We do have, here we go. It already has been mini tubbed. There's a fuel cell sitting here, not bolted down. Battery stuff not bolted down. The mini tubs look very nice. Whoever did them did a really good job on that. And then underneath, we've got an 8.8 .8 that's been shortened, had some parts put in it, uh, four nine inch ends. We got coilovers in the rear. And it looks like, yep, it looks like it's got the upper upper uh, bushings in the 8.8. .8. So, I mean, there's some, there's some good stuff about this. You know what I mean? Like, there's some good stuff about the setup, but I'm not really a Fox body guy. So I'm not quite sure what we're gonna do with this. 
And then the other thing that I got, I'll show you guys when it gets here because that one's getting delivered, um, was merely just, you know, a money maker. Something came up cheap. The parts that were on it were more expensive than the price I paid for it. And actually you guys have, if you've seen on Facebook and all, you guys have already seen it. Um, but yeah, so we've got that coming too. Whew, there's a lot going on. I guess now we can talk a little bit about plans and what they are, right? So I have a lot to figure out. Personally, I've got to figure out uh, a lot of stuff going on with my health. I still require another surgery. Um, they have some treatment they want me to start. There's quite a few things going on with the health aspect. And what I'm finding out is that it may not be a good idea for me to continue doing a lot of the things that I was doing. What I mean by that is like a lot of these super long trips and back to back to back to back and all of that um, might not work out so well. So it's funny because in the same sentence, I'm going to talk about a thing we do have a plan for, which is sick week. This year I got into sick week and... I'm really excited about it. Last year we went and did sick ward, but we didn't do any racing. This year I would like to do some racing. And I have in my state of just sitting at home and just doing some remote work and not really doing much, have pieced together the final pieces for the Texas Speed Ruthless Run uh, 332 530, which is a rod piston aluminum motor. Uh, we've got good lifters coming. We've got good heads. We have head studs, a custom cam, even as far as uh, I believe I ordered an intake as well as something really nice too. So it's going to be a completely new engine just about from top to bottom. There may be a couple bolts that get reused, but other than that, uh, it's going to be completely new. I got the oil pan in the other day. Um, I did order a couple sets of racing seats, the Jags ones that are like the Kirkies, but they say Jags on them instead. And I've got a bunch of parts piling up. I'm just not quite sure what I want to do for sick week yet. The reason I say that is because I do want to go faster than 1150. Uh, I think that if I go to sick week and only run 1150, although it would be fun, it wouldn't be challenging myself to really any kind of point. So that's going to require a cage. And I never wanted to put a cage in the Regal. That was kind of the whole thing about it was that I didn't want it to be that kind of a car. Now, I'm not sure what decision I'm going to make and how I'm going to go about it just yet because honestly, there's a lot more important things that I got to get figured out about my life and health and everything else. But I do know that I'm planning on putting something together for sick week. What will likely happen is whatever I find is going to be the easiest thing for me to do. And we will have backup plans because as you guys saw earlier in the video, like the Regal is uh, about ready to be tagged. The El Camino did go through inspection. We gotta adjust the brakes a little bit, no big deal. Um, so I'll have backup plans. If I just have to run 1150, it is what it is. But I would like to do something a little more fun than that. And, you know, really enjoy the experience. Because what it looks like right now, I'm gonna go to PRI, but I'm really not doing anything else the rest of this year. Um, just because I shouldn't. I need to take it easy. I, I need to relax. I need to figure out, like I said, what's going on with this health stuff. So it's taken me weeks to make this video. Um, I have tried and tried and tried, and every time I picked a camera up, I just wasn't feeling it. And, you know, a lot of that is with what's going on with my health, and, you know, that there there's some stuff mentally that happens there too. So I'm feeling good now. I'm actually holding my cell phone up because I'm not holding the camera up right now, but holding my cell phone up. I feel pretty good talking to you guys. And it's just been killing me that I haven't given you guys the update and the thank you for the support. A lot of people have reached out. A lot of people um, have made comments, have sent messages, uh, everything. And, and I tried to answer all of them. I believe, you know, it's, I really do appreciate the support. Um, it's kind of unfortunate because I'm going to be honest with you, the, the possibility that I really take a big step back from racing is real. Um, and there's a multitude of reasons for that. Now, 
I also don't know what's going to happen. I could start treatment and the treatment can work wonderfully and I could be back to a great old self without a lot of problems and everything could all work out. But we just don't know any of that yet. And I don't know how much I'm willing to risk. I've been in the hospital. I've been hospitalized multiple times for these issues. The thing that scares me is that if I continue to go down this path, it's not really a path. Like there's not something I'm choosing to do. It just kind of is the luck of the draw of what's going on with my health. But if we continue to do things the way we've been doing them, um, you know, one of those hospital trips could be my last. And that's a scary realization at 33 years old. And probably not something I wanted to talk about in the video anyway, but you know what? It is what it is. I'm gonna let you guys just really know what's going on. And for all the people that have supported me over the years and really made an, you know, made an effort to be a part of the team, I think you guys deserve that. So I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what's going on. The next steps, everything takes time. It's, you know, I've got appointments in coming weeks. I've got appointments in coming months. I've got appointments four months from now. So I just don't really know. But I think personally, for my personal enjoyment, and because I want to have some fun, I want to do sick week. I want to go enjoy that experience. I want to have fun with cars again. You know, small tire, no prep is out of freaking hand. It is crazy. And I just don't know that I got it in my body to keep attempting to push for a goal of that magnitude, to be straight up and honest. Will that change? I don't know, who knows. I'm sitting here looking at the Camaro right now, like, man, I wish I could just, let me just do this and do this so I can finish this thing up and blah, blah, blah. But it, it kind of is what it is, guys, you know. I have to make sure that the important things are being taken care of first. And right now, the most important thing is gonna be my body and my health. Because beyond what is happening right now, I'm only 33 years old, what's going to happen in 10, 20, 30 years? You know what I mean? The kind of stuff you got to think about. Being an adult sucks. I think that I've rambled on enough in this video. I really apologize for being gone for so long, but you guys got to understand that a lot of what was happening and a lot of what's been going on has been very physically and mentally draining. Um, you know, I was in the hospital for two weeks. I was in a hospital bed. I then spent another three, four weeks, whatever it was, uh, with a midline in my arm that I gave myself antibiotics every day. And although I was able to accomplish some things and I did try to get out a little bit and I'm, I've been going very, very slow, which is very unlike me. You know, I have usually, I'm out of the hospital and I'm just, bam, back to it. Um, this time it hasn't really worked out that way. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. We will have more videos coming. I'm not sure what they're going to be about in terms of what car or what this or that. Because like I said, this thing I don't really like. But if it's really easy to put an aluminum 5.3 with a 400 in it and get a bar in it so I can run at least 10.0 if not faster, maybe we have to do that. And maybe I got to do something I don't really want to do that much to have the end goal of enjoying the experience of sick week. Nah, I can't do a box body. I'll catch you guys in the next one.